Coreopsis tinctorio is one of over 75 species in the family Asteraceae. Originally native to the prairies of North America, it is now cultivated worldwide and comes in a range of yellows and reds or, like Coreopsis tinctoria, yellow with red centres. As the word tinctoria indicates this is a recognised dye plant and although historical reference to it is limited, it is known to have been used as a source of natural dye by the Plains tribes of North America. It's also thought to have been used by the early civilizations of Central and South America. Sometimes called tick seed, a reference to its insect-like seeds, the plant was reportedly used in bedding to ward off bed bugs. Coreopsis tinctoria is an easily grown annual that will add a cheerful splash of colour to the sunny corner of your dye garden. It flowers throughout the summer and early autumn and the hoverflies seem to love it. Always be sure to leave any harvested dye stuffs outside for a couple of hours to give insect life a chance to go elsewhere. The flowers can be used fresh or dried for natural dyeing and picking off the flower heads as they begin to fade will encourage more to grow. Once the flowering season is over, the plant tops can also be used for dyeing, giving a further range of colours. In order to dry the flower heads to store for use at a later stage, you need to spread them out on old newspaper in a warm, dry spot out of direct light. Make sure they're completely dry before storing them in paper bags. For this natural dyeing project, I'm using a skein of naturally white, blue-faced Leicester wool, which is an animal fibre also known as a protein fibre. I'm also using a skein of natural linen, a skein of banana yarn and a square of cotton fabric. These three are plant fibres, also known as cellulose fibres. These fibres were all mordanted before dyeing. For detailed information on how to prepare both plant and animal fibres for dyeing, you may like to read about our self-paced online course An Introduction to Natural Dyeing, which you will find on our website at www.elkatextiles.co.uk. I used 100% weight of fibre, often referred to as WOF or WOOF. This means I used an equal weight of dye stuff and fibre. My fibre samples weighed just under 60 grams and the flower heads all came from Ellie's dye garden. Coreopsis tinctoria is rich in dye stuffs, including luteolin, yellow, and morin, the orange component of fustic. They are highly water soluble, so following the advice of Susan Dye of Nature's Rainbow, I simply poured kettle hot water over the fresh flowers, making sure I would have a deep enough dye bath to allow the fibre samples to move freely. I left them to soak overnight before straining the dye stuff to create a clear dye bath, no further heating required. The dye stuff was then strained through a muslin lined sieve to create a clear dye bath, free of any bits that might get caught up in the fibres. Be sure to soak fibres well before adding them to the dye bath. This is known as wetting out and allows the fibres to open up, making them more receptive to the dye. I always soak fibres at least overnight and, in the case of water resistant wool, for a couple of nights. I would normally recommend dyeing wool separately as it's more fragile than most plant fibres and needs gentle handling to avoid matting. In this case, all four fibres were entered together into the dye bath and left to steep without heating for 24 hours. Leaving fibres to steep for longer might result in stronger colours, but as we'll see, this 100% weight of fibre dye bath was pretty potent. The next day, remove the fibres from the dye bath and hang them to dry without washing. This gives the fibres a chance to retain as much of the dye as possible as they dry out. Washing them immediately risks losing too much of the precious dye. Bear in mind that fibres will always be several shades lighter once they dry and allow for this when considering the weight of dye stuff to fibre, the all-important woof. It's also the case that there is a limit to how much dye stuff a fibre can absorb at any one time. So for bolder colours, it's worth considering remordanting and then over dyeing. The final stage in the natural dyeing process is to wash the fibres well in warm water with a little pH neutral detergent. Ecover Zero is a good option. Rinse the fibres in several changes of cold water until there is little or no dye colour left. 
then hang them to finally dry. I always like to make the most of a good dye bath, so added a second batch of samples to this pre-used exhaust dye bath. I left them to steep in the cold dye bath for several days as I was busy with other things and was very happy with the result. It's interesting to see that the difference in colour between the original and the exhaust dye baths is much more pronounced on the plant fibres than the animal. The exhaust plant fibres are not just paler but more yellow in tone, while the wool has retained its orange glow. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed this video, the best way to support us is to give the video a like and subscribe to our channel. If you're interested in taking your natural dyeing further, please head over to our website www.elkatextiles.co.uk to browse our growing range of award-winning craft courses.